Hello there, Marvel Legends, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior. And I've just filmed a whole new type of video with a whole new concept, and I think you're gonna like it. I hope you do, because I really enjoyed this. So here it is, the House of X Hox Pox Wave Review, and it's coming up right now. All right, here we are, gang. I'm surrounded by all these different things. Let's do this. So, first of all, I'm gonna bring out Moira McTaggart. Hello there, Charles. I, I'm sorry, I can't do a Scottish accent. Don't know why I was bludgeoning your ears with that. But we have Moira McTaggart, who in the House of X, they really made a very interesting character where it's revealed that she does have a mutant power in that she, when she dies, her consciousness goes back to her embryo in her mother's womb and she lives her life all over again with the knowledge that she's acquired from her previous lives. So that's really fascinating. And they even kind of like say that there's like a sort of a psychic sort of trance that she goes into when she's like in, uh, in, in her mother's womb so that she doesn't like go bonkers being an adult woman in a uterus, which is quite bizarre. But anyway, going back to the figure, this is really nice. And it's kind of weird because I wasn't expecting to really think much of her. But you know what? Even though now that I look closely at her lipstick, it looks quite horribly painted on. <laughs> you know, at a glance when I was looking at these last night, it looked fine. But my goodness, you can see her lips do not match the lipstick. So it looks kind of just plastered on there. So that's a bit cheap. But what I do like is the glasses. The glasses look nice. They've, they look so much better than the awful goggles on Peter Parker from, from the retro wave. So that's a huge improvement. Now, what's actually really likable about this figure is the fact that, of course, you've got the removable arms so that you can take these arms off and take the jacket off and have her in more of a casual kind of look, which I'm not gonna do because yeah, I wanna make this like a quick, sort of a quick fire fun kind of video. And we don't wanna linger on this for too long, basically. But yeah, this is a fun Moira who is gonna go fine with the collection, but I don't get too sort of excited about her because she is kind of a civilian character, even though she does have, uh, you know, a mutant power. But you can see also her other head looks really great. Actually, this looks, better than the glasses one. I think the, maybe the uh, the lipstick is slightly better applied. Oh, still, it still doesn't really match. Whoop. <laughs> it doesn't match properly with the, uh, with the lips. So that's pretty bad, Hasbro. I mean, come on, guys. What are you, what are you doing there? But having said that, the actual facial expression is really good. The eyes don't look lazy. She's got like a more sort of believable, dynamic, pretty kind of female expression. So that's pretty good. And Moira there is fine. She's not like a blow away figure, but also considering that a lot of people might want to use this body as a retro Mary Jane body without the lab coat, that works pretty well. So Moira's kind of cool. Now then we get to the more fun ones. So we have Cyclops, the field leader. And you see, I've got him full on with the blast effect here. And at first I was really not excited about Cyclops. Let me take this off for ease of display. Cause I thought he's a really basic body with you know very little going on there. But as you can see with the great blast effect head, that's so much more interesting. Hasbro have finally done what I always wished they would do, which was give us two faces. We've got relaxed neutral face and battle face and that's what I've always been wanting is relax face battle face give us the options let us choose how we want to display the figures so this makes me really happy to have these two as a potential you know posing option now what's really irritating with my figure is just his thigh swivel is crazy loose which is really annoying just because you know you want you want nice stiff joints on a brand new figure which this cyclops doesn't have he also has the teeny tiny feet, which is a real shame. Like, come on, how difficult is it to give us just slightly more base foot area to help us pose our figures? But clearly that's not on the agenda. But all that notwithstanding, the belt design looks kind of cool with the nice silver and the panels and the different pouches. And they actually put the silver on the, uh, the, the, the pockets. That's just a nice little touch that normally Hasbro like will overlook. So credit where it's due, you actually did it there. Thank you. 
So I appreciate that very, very much. And then of course you've got this blast effect here and that looks pretty cool actually. I like having a dynamic sort of character look and view to go with this. You angle it upwards and that looks cool. Of course, he's got his like his two tapping fingers there. It took me a little while to get the angle just right. But now that it's there, I like this Cyclops more than I was expecting. And that speaks volumes because I was really against this wave. We all know that I hate bought this wave <laughs> because it's on the HasLab Sentinel box art. So I was like, I've got to get the figures that are on the box art because I'm just a mark, quite frankly. But now that I've got them, I'm kind of liking them. So here we have Professor X, who's a real elitist, unpleasant, unlikable character in the comics. And I, I hope they kind of adjust him a little bit. But still, this is a figure that a lot of people were kind of giving out about because it's so plain, just a plain black body with the helmet. But you know what? I kind of, I get it because you've got to have Xavier represented in the House of X line. He's pretty much the main character and this is how he looks. So if you're not going to change you know, what the figure fundamentally looks like from the comics, which we would be an uproar if you did, then we're going to have to deal with having a very plain body. But at least, you know, the Cerebro helmet does look kind of cool. They've got some nice detailing going on with the pipes and the different channels and things going on there. It, it's got some good, you know, sculpting that's bringing it to life. A lot of people are going to use this to make a maker custom which I think will look kind of cool but yeah there's something sinister about this look where you can't see his eyes and he's all very kind of elitist and I feel like there's going to be some revelations about Xavier but still as it is right here I'm kind of liking this figure again I don't I don't love him if he was just sat on the peg on his own I would have no interest in buying him but as a group ah, he gets a he gets a pass so now we have probably my least favorite figure of the whole wave and I think a lot of people agree with me on this we have Marvel Girl and just uh, there's just nothing to her first of all I don't understand why the comics went back to this retro design it's like why why would any contemporary why would a contemporary human being a mutant or otherwise be like yeah yeah this is this is how I want to look this looks good it doesn't. It looks like you've just stepped out of the 60s and, you know, you've been designed by, uh, you know, John Remitia or Steve Ditko or it just doesn't. I know neither of those guys actually designed this figure or this design, but still, it just looks so retro for the point of what? Why? Why is it re retro? If you're going into battle fighting, you know, mutants and monsters and robots, why are you wearing a thin fabric skirt like at least with cyclops you can imagine this is sort of tactical padded kevlar type gear this is a dress you're you're wearing a summer dress to go and 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 fight monsters and god knows what pointless although she's clearly not bothered about it because if you look at her face could anyone look less excited about doing anything than jean gray just look at her there's just nothing it's the most bored expression ever terrible absolutely terrible who thought that this was a good look for the character it's so uninspired really 100 percent meh do not dig this at all very much against this figure one, one thing she has going for her she's got the the krakoa flower for those of you who are not familiar with the krakoa storyline they the x-men plant these flowers around the world and then they sprout and grow uh tele teleport teleportation portals whatever you can step through and go on to krakoa and only mutants can go through it again these elitist mutants but still it's fun to have that but again with her stupid female splayed hands she can't hold it and you can just just sort of sit by her but you know so it's not a great accessory because we've got the same splayed out weird fimbly bimbly female hands that we have had for years and years and years and again similar with the female sculpt she has the very small feet so I've pre-posed her so there we go but so disappointing well I'm not disappointing because I never had my hopes up for a great Marvel girl figure I didn't want one but we got one and it's been done badly also people have said really stumpy legs and I kind of see that too oh bye bye Cyclops but yeah uh very short legs 
just not doing her any favors whatsoever. If Marvel Girl was a real person and this was her action figure, I think she'd be like, oh, come on, guys. Seriously, why did you make me look so stumpy? That that just disappoints me immensely. So not happy with that one, but it's the weakest one of the line. That's what I'm saying. So now we have possibly one of the strongest ones of the line. We have the Omega Sentinel, a very controversial figure, of course, because as we can see on the face here, I'm not going to bang on about it because everyone else has already. Uh, she has a very kind of uh, Caucasian looking uh, skin complexion, skin tone on her on her jaw. And this character is a human character who's been converted through nanobots or whatever into being a sentinel. So she is originally human and I, I believe maybe of Indian descent. I'm not sure. But either way, she ain't she ain't white. All right. And this figure right here, this this paint job is white. So someone really dropped the ball with that. But if you don't like that, you can go for her other head, which is this kind of cool looking red, more sentinel kind of, well, not necessarily more sentinel, but just like less human looking. Actually, is it less human? I think that they're both pretty un inhuman. But uh, yeah, you can go for this other sort of bald kind of look, which is really cool. Like I, I was torn. I was I was totally torn as to which one to go for. But ultimately, I went for the one with, with the hair because I love all this huge hair in the great big bunches. Very sort of crazy anime Japanese schoolgirl. This whole figure, especially with like the, with the ghost in the shell, half face looks really anime style. So that's really, really fun. So I like what they've done here. And of course, she has the removable limbs as well. So you can you can change both. You can change both arms into guns. She has another gun here as well. But this gun, it looks kind of cheap with the barrel just painted or not not painted just just flat plastic silver on the inside this one looks way more interesting it's got more color going on and that being said speaking of color the wonderful bright red design with the white and the black it looks great it looks dynamic from a sort of graphic design kind of point of view looks really really cool so i totally I, I, I dig her. I think she's a, a cool looking figure. So I'm a lot happier with that. Let's let's start cycling some people out, shall we? So that more folks can get the get the spotlight. So I'm going to put Omega Sentinel right in the middle here. And now that she's there, now would be a good time, actually, to say hello to an I think an honorary or an unofficial member of this wave. We have. Oh, that was inevitable. Nimrod. Mutant target acquired. So you're all familiar with Nimrod, but this particular version with the what, with the silver face, with the silver face uh, and the sort of butterfly, uh, dragonfly kind of pattern coming out of his back. <laughs> you're always going to get falling figures with these videos of mine. Uh, yeah, the, this Nimrod is specifically House of X in design. So that's that's kind of cool. That's kind of fun. So I consider him a part of the wave. And that is another reason why I don't feel quite so salty about buying the House of X wave, because it gives Nimrod a really good kind of official home as well. But you can see Cyclops being a pain in the backside to stand up with his loose thigh swivel. And that's a big, that's an issue. You know, we, he, he's got loose thighs. And this is fresh out of the box. I just unboxed these last night on a two hour live stream. Jeez, I just... I just kept going and going with that, but I was having fun. We you know, we had uh, like 60 people at one time, so we were having some good bants in the live stream. I really enjoyed that. So there you go. <laughs> I managed to make some space. So we've got some more figures, and I think Nimrod works really well with this group. So now let's bring on the essential for any X-Men line, Wolverine. Hey, bub. And you know what? People say we have too many Wolverines, and I get it. I understand it. But at the same time, he is essential for House of X. And this costume design is just different enough to warrant a new figure. So it, it's like it's a take on his brown costume, but there is more going on. We've got the nice buckles and details on his boots there that really kind of bring him to life a bit more. His smiling face. I mean, how often do we get a smiling Wolverine? Not often. It looks a little bit creepy. I'm not sure what I think of that, but still, his claws are the X-Force claws, and these are the best looking claws that Hasbro have done for Wolverine, I, I think. Um, I'm not sure if they're different from the Hugh Jackman ones. Maybe they are, because the Hugh Jackman ones look terrific, but for 
comic book legends. This this claw set with the nice butterfly joints here. He's a good looking Wolverine. He is. So I've I've got a lot of time for him. I have, you know, as all Legends collectors do, I've got like 10 billion Wolverines. But now we have 10 billion and one. And that's fine. I can I can live with that. And also he has, of course, uh, what a lot of people, again, who weren't overly familiar with House of X were like, what's the deal with this? He has a goatee, a, a grey goatee face. And this was from the original House of X miniseries, where they kind of did like a flash forward to, I think it was 100 years in the future they went. And he's aged pretty well. He's just gone a bit grey and grown a goatee. So that's his future face. But again, this is a contemporary display, so we're not going to have the future looks. Uh, except I think maybe this Nimrod actually only appears in the future. I don't know. I gave up reading after the original House of X because I was like, oh, OK, that's enough of this. Now then, for the last mainline figure, we have Magneto. And uh, yeah, I feel like Magneto is fine. But like, I, you know, this bright white costume, normally I, I like bright white costumes. But I mean, there, you can see there's a bit of paint smudging going on on his thigh, which is, that's a bit of a shame. It's like, come on, Hasbro, get your, get your act together. Also, his boots, well, he, he doesn't have boots. It looks like he's wearing a morph suit. He's just got nothing. It's, it's just this plain spandex. Like, this is what Spider-Man feet would look like. You know, th there's no boot detail. That's lazy. All right. That's lazy. You could have actually just given him Wolverine's boots, for example, painted them white, and it would have made this figure look so much more impressive and dynamic. I just feel he looks he looks a bit silly, quite frankly. All right, Cyclops, that was just going to happen all the time. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of this look. But what is what is good, though? See, I don't really like his face too much. Too, too plain, not very exciting. I want a better face. So, fortunately, I do have the helmetless, <laughs> helmetless, is that a word? The helmetless version of Magneto's head from the black and red version of the character. So I'm going to pop that on here. Ah, come on, you little, there we go. I'm going to pop that on. And I think this makes a huge improvement to the character. I think this looks so much better. I'm much more of a fan of this look for Magneto. He has the different gripping hands as well, so you can have one angry clenched fist, one hand about to project some magnetic powers, and what it would be nice if he had some power effects, but hang on, that head's not really popped down properly. It'd be nice if he had some power effects, which unfortunately he doesn't, but um, I'm probably going to pill for some from uh, maybe Polaris or someone else similar. It'd be nice to get to use some uh, purple ones, because that is more what I associate with Magneto, is more kind of purpley sort of power effects. But yeah, this, with this head, with this head, I think looks great. With this helmet head, uh, I'm not such a fan. So here you go. With a, a, a few accoutrements, I think he looks pretty decent. But also I think a flight stand, a flight stand would really help Magneto look more impressive. So I think I'll, I'll do that. I'll incorporate a flight stand. And speaking of head swaps, I almost forgot to mention, there is, of course, another head swap you can do as well which is the Professor X head. He also comes with his eyes closed using psychic powers head, which you can use on, <laughs> you can use on the 90s Professor X, which looks pretty cool. I'm not sure if I would keep it like this because I kind of like him having his eyes open. But at the same time, this is a really fun kind of design and it looks so much better than the splat effect that that uh this wheel that this uh, hover chair professor x came with which just looked kind of ridiculous so this is a fun way to use the extra head from xavier and finally finally we have the bath itself a controversial bath because a lot of people were like what the hell is this you know and i can understand why because it's a weird design of a character which I think appeared for like three pages or something, if that. Uh, very few people recognized him and he was listed as uh, Tri-Sentinel or people were referring to him as Tri-Sentinel, which of course he's not the Tri-Sentinel. Uh, that's something from uh, Spider-Man. So he is the Theta Sentinel and here he is in all of his spindly bindly glory and make of this character what you will. I... 
really, he's the main reason I got the wave, I suppose, because I wanted to have the uh, all the Sentinels. Again, once you once you buy into the HasLab Sentinel, there's a lot of extra cost if you want to be a completist. Again, no one's putting a gun to your head. You don't have to be a completist. It's just me being me. All right, the sun's coming out now, so <laughs> not that I'm a vampire, but the glare might mean I have to wrap this video up. But you can see we've got all the different details here. It, it, it's fun in a unique kind of way. It's a very unique looking build, but you know, you feel like when I when I get a builder figure, I want to feel some weight and heft and chunk. You know, I want I want Venom Pool, I want Rhino, Sandman, Monster Venom, you know, the hefty builder figures. And even though this guy is tall, he's so spindly bindly, it's kind of crazy. But I do love the purple. I love the the purple. You can see the way the sun reflects it. It looks kind of beautiful. So there's a lot to be said about this. It's not it's not terrible. It's just a unusual design. And also, as everyone has said, these heads are damn near impossible to port in without any kind of uh, hot water or hairdryer. I had to dunk the torso in hot water for a long time to soften it up so I could get these these neck joints in. But when I got them in, finally, they they stuck and they stayed there. <laughs> I just, I, this is what I'm learning from doing videos like, like this, is it's gonna be chaos, but fun chaos. And guys, that is the falling apart, broken apart House of X wave. And I've gotta say, I like this more than I thought I would. I really hate bought this wave just because it, they're on the box art for the HasLab Sentinel. But now that I've got them, you know what? I actually kind of like them. With Nimrod in the back as well, that makes a fun kind of wave. Do I want to buy a second wave of House of X? No, I, I really don't. Will I? Who knows? Because I'm kind of an idiot. So there we go, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this different kind of format. If you did, I'll do more unboxings like this. If you didn't, then I won't. That's just the way this goes. So folks, thanks very much for watching. And until next time. Keep displaying model behavior. Chill.